Zero Accounting Software 2023 Budgeted Income Statement Export to Excel and Modify Part Number 2. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you. Because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Ugg slippers. I usually walk around my home in just my socks, but I wanted a high quality pair of slippers that didn't have a heel on them so I can slip them on easily give me a little bit more warmth than just my socks provide and which has a sole on them so I can deal with messes in the home such as spilled liquid or broken glass without getting my socks wet or my feet cut up and the Ugg slippers do a great job with that. I like the quality of the slippers. They feel like they're going to last a long time. They will probably outlast me so I recommend the Ugg slippers. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation that being get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs and put our reports in them right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it right click in the tab up top again so we can duplicate it once again back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down opening up our balance sheet report this being a comparative report if you don't have it you can open the standard balance sheet. Tab into the right, accounting drop down. We want the income statement report. This being a comparative income statement report, if you don't have it, you can open the standard income statement. In a prior presentation, we took the information from a trial balance, exported it to Excel, and then trimmed it down to the information that is basically the income statement information so that we can create a budget from it. We double check that by looking at our total income statement here, the net income tying out to the 1324, which matches what we have thus far on our income statement. We took the pennies off, 1324. So now what we're gonna do is take this information to then uh, budget out into the future. Now note that we are, we entered two months of data input into the system, January and February. We're going to imagine that that was like November and December of the prior year so that we can take that data and then project out for 12 months. And that also will allow us then to take the information and put it into zero and what run reports for at least two months of which we will already have data, actual data that we can compare to the uh, budgeted data that we'll put into the system. Okay, that said, let's go back on over to the budget here and uh, let's continue adding on to this. So we basically have our income statement, positive numbers for the revenue, negative numbers for the expenses. So this is the most trimmed down uh, income statement we can have in one column, which makes it easy for us to kind of project out into the future. I'm going to delete this column over here. We don't really need this one. So I'm going to put my cursor on the C, drop down, right click and delete that. All right. So then let's, I'm going to put some months over here. This will be where we construct our budget from our data on the left. And so I want to add a, a row up top, which will be our header row, row. So I'm going to put my cursor on row one, selecting the entire row right clicking on it and inserting which puts a row above it and so then over here we'll start in january and this is where our date is going to be so i'm going to say jan tab feb tab and i should be able to the system should be able to see that pattern so i'm going to select these two months put my cursor on the fill handle and drag to the right and you can see it says march and i can drag on over till we get to december 
uh, our November, December. And then I'm going to center that while it's still highlighted. Home tab, uh, alignment, center. And we'll go to the font group, drop down. Let's make it black. Drop down, let's make it white. Black and white, there we go. And so that looks good. I'm going to select all of these now and see if I can make them a little bit thinner, a little bit skinnier, put them on a bit of a diet so we can see it all on one page here. You can't fit them all on the page when they're that large. Uh, let's put another, let's put another uh, column in between these two. Uh, right click and insert another so we have this like kind of breaker between our source data and our budget data all right so now our starting point is going to be this is two months worth of data so our starting point will be let's just take that and divide it by two and that's what we're going to imagine will be our normal numbers all the way down well for each month because that'll be our monthly number now that's way too simplistic because we might have variance on that because we might have some months that are larger than other months. Uh, we might expect our revenue to go up over time just as a matter of course because of our excellent work and, and people word of mouth just catching fire so that we start uh, growing. Uh, and, but we'll get but we'll start off with the baseline which will just basically be if it, if it, if this was 12 months worth of data we can take it and divide it by 12. Now there's two methods that you can basically use by the way. You could say I'm going to take my income statement, I could make an income statement per month for the prior year possibly and then project that out and say I'm just going to start with an income statement that's actual numbers from the prior year. And that way you might be able to capture more of the seasonal differences if you have seasonal differences but oftentimes that that's not the best thing sometimes because uh you might be improving towards the end of the year so the end of the year might look a lot different than the beginning of the year in terms of the business environment so so it might sometimes be better to start off with taking like the whole year or whatever and then dividing it by 12 and getting at least an average of the year and then go from there Another method you might say is, well, at the end of the year, I think that is most uh, most in alignment with, with what I think is going to happen going forward because we've improved towards the end of the year. And I think that improvement is going to stick and go forward. It's not just a seasonal thing, possibly. And you think that's going to go forward. So it just kind of depends on the business. But I'm going to start by saying, let's do this. We're going to take this number and divide it by two. So that number divided by two gives us our uh, monthly amount of the 29226. Uh, now I could just copy that all the way down. So I could just take this and uh, copy it down. But note that if I copy it to the right, it's gonna it's gonna cause a problem. Like if I copy it to the right, it's gonna it's gonna then pull this cell to the right because anything that comes from our from our source data, uh, we need to be careful of to see if we need to make an absolute reference from it or mixed reference. Now I could I could fix that by double clicking here and like making this a mixed reference so I can copy it down and across, which is kind of a, a neat thing to know. But I'm going to use a different method here instead in February. I'm going to say February is going to equal the month before it because that allows me to make a change anywhere in in the following month which will carry forward going forward so therefore i'm not going to use a mixed reference or anything i'm just going to copy this one down uh and i don't need to and so therefore i don't need a, an absolute or a mixed reference or anything i'm just going to copy this down and this gives us our information on a monthly basis i'm not going to populate the net income because i would rather recalculate the net income this way so now i've recalculated the net income and so now when I go into February, what I would like to do is instead of copying this to the right, which I, again, I could format it so it still pulls the source data. I like to say this should be equal to the prior period. And so that way, when I copy this one all the way forward, every cell is equaling the prior cell. And that, and that way, if I make a change out here in August to like 30,000, that change will copy forward by default. That's why I prefer uh, using this method. 
So then I'm gonna go back on over. I'm just gonna do that all the way down. This equals the prior cell, and then I can copy that down. I could just fill handle that and copy that down. And then I can take all of that and copy that to the right. Copy it to the right. I can't see how far it should go because I'm blind up to the top. So there it is. I'll just delete these when it went too far. You've gone too far. You've gone too far this time. I'm going to select those and right click. You will be deleted. There we go. That's what you get for going too far. So now this is going to be the total over here. And I'm going to select this whole column over here. And then home tab, clipboard, and paintbrush it and then paintbrush this one. So we get the same formatting and then I'll just total this up equals the sum, our most famous function, the sum function, very famous, very popular, everybody's favorite function. If you don't like this, the sum function, it's just because you're jealous. You're just a hater. That's why everybody likes it. It's the best. It's the best function. If it's not, if you don't think it's the best function, you're wrong. You're just wrong, man. Anyways, I'll copy this one over to, uh, Hold on, wait a second. This should be the sum down here. Here's the sum and I'll copy this one across. And so you can double check your number uh, here. That's probably the best check. So if you, if you followed everything that we did, you should come up with this 7944 on the total down here. All right, so now let's make some alterations with this thing. I'm gonna save it right now so I don't lose it because this is, I've got some good work happening here. And then I'm gonna go back up and say that uh, we want, let's start with this one. I'm, I'm gonna start with the rental income. I'll make, it, I'll make it green just so we can see where we are. And I'm gonna say that that one, we'll say it start, we think January is gonna be the same, but in February, it'll be one month worth of data. But in February, we're gonna start to increase it. And we'll, there's a couple of ways we can increase it. We could say, over time, it's just going to go up, I think, because we're going to get more business. What do I think it's going to go up by? Well, we could make it go up by a fixed amount, or we could make it go up uh, by a percentage increase that will be compounding. Uh, or we might have a seasonal kind of thing where we have to basically, you know, do a seasonal type of thing for a few months that we think are bigger than the rest of the months, right? So let's say that we think it's going to go up by 5% compounded for the year. So in January, it was 1130. So we're going to say this equals, and let's take the prior amount, and then we're going to say it increases by 5%. So I'm going to say times 1.05, meaning 105%, or one being 100%, which would give us the 1130 plus another 5% uh, over the top of that 105%. So if I enter that, now we have this. Now it populates the rest across this way, because all the rest of them are equaling the prior. That's good, but I'm going to compound it. I want it to keep increasing going forward. So for example, here, I want this to be equal to the prior one times 1.05 as well. Now, if I just copy that formula across, I can just put my fill handle, fill handle it, copy it across, then it should work. So, so there we have our total at the 17,986. All right, so let's continue on with the next one. I'm going to say, let's do this one. Uh, that's going to, the, 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 this one, let's do this one. And so it's going to go up and let's say it goes up in a similar fashion, but by 10%. So I'll go to February. This equals the prior month times 1.10, 100% 1 plus 10%, 110%, 1.10. .10. Enter. Let's copy that across so we'll pick our cursor there and it's going to compound going forward so we'll fill handle that across and there we have it the total at the 624966 now another method of increase that you might use is to say well what if it doesn't go up by a percent but it goes up uh by by a fixed dollar amount for example so let's pick this one and say that we're on February and I think it's just going to increase by a thousand dollars. And so I'm just going to double click on it and say it's going to go the prior cell plus 1000. Now, again, that'll populate going across. But if I think it's going to increase by a thousand dollars each month, I can once again copy that across. So now it's not increasing by a percent, but just a thousand dollars. We think it's going to go up by a thousand dollars each month and compounding across to 117,000. 
All right, so let's go back on over then and let's go let's go to the cost of goods sold. Let's go to the cost of goods sold here and uh this one this one should be tied to our sales because we should have a constant basically profit margin. So if you deal with inventory, you would think your cost of goods sold would increase in relation to your sales. And unless you made a change, like a change to the sales price, right? You increase or decrease the sales price. So for example, if, if we think uh, like, like in January, the cost of goods sold is 2297, oh, hold on a second, 22,977 over the sales, 29226, and that's 0.7861%. So you would think in February, if I increase the sales to 32,148, that this should be equal to uh, times the 32,148, that the cost of goods sold would go up to 25,274. Now, an easy way to do that is we could say, well, if sale, whatever the sales went up by, the percent that it went up by, we should, which was 1.1, 10%, and we compounded it, we could do the same thing for cost of goods sold. So I could say this will be the same relationship. So we're going to say this will be equal to the prior times 1.1, and, and then, and that should be the same thing, right? So if I take this 25275 divided by the 32148. This is this divided by this. We get that uh, 0.786, right? So I should be able to get that all the way across. So if I copy this across, it'll be increasing. When I get to here, I should have that same relationship, which is this 65556 divided by the 83384. And there is the same ratio, I'm pretty sure, unless I uh, forgot, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. Okay, let's go down to the expense side of things. The expenses, most of the expenses are probably going to be more standard, like, like the, the bank service charge, for example. It's immaterial or pretty small, probably won't have an impact too much on our, uh, on our projections So uh, because of the dollar amount. So we'll keep that basically the same and it should be somewhat the same going across anyways. And then insurance. Now note that when you think about your budgets, you might also think about a cash budget versus an accrual budget. You'll recall if when we when we put our data together, we did an accrual concept to deduct the thousand dollars. But if you're on a cash system and you're tracking cash closely, you know, you might track it, you might think about the expenses that you're deducting on a cash basis. Let's just think about it that way just so you can see if that kind of system that might happen because you might say, okay, when do I pay? Maybe I pay my insurance twice a year, for example. So if I pay it like in February, I might pay 6,000 in February and like 6,000 in September, for example. And so you might have some kind of uh, difference in your, in your reporting from a month to month reporting that would look something like that. All right. All right. Now let's go down to the wages. Now with, with, with the wages, you might have a situation where it's pretty much the same until it isn't right. The, the taxes get a little bit messy because, because you could have caps and whatnot on the taxes, but usually it's for, it's fairly consistent unless you have hourly service and you have variance for seasonal work and whatnot, but we're going to say it's consistent, but you might have this, a level up kind of situation. You might say, I think it's going to be consistent, but I predict that I'm going to have to, I'm going to give raises or something like in June, uh, uh, let, let's say. So, so, that, so if in June, we're, we think it's going to go up by 10% or something. So if that happened, you're going to take the prior period times 1.1 in June, increase in 10%, 110% of the prior period, bringing it up to 7682. And after that step up, you're, we're going to say it's going to lock in at that higher rate going forward, right? And that, that might be, that's like a, that's why this nice formula that keeps the, that is always equal to the prior cell is kind of nice for the budget. Now then the taxes right below it, we would think in a similar way that we had with the sales and the cost of goods sold, that the payroll taxes would go up in relation. So I would think I would have a similar relationship between the payroll taxes, social security, Medicare, employer portion, 
with the other. So I could say this is, will also go up by, we're going to say, 10% as an estimate, right? So that comes up to the 535. So those increase to the total for the 88688 and the 6175. Let's actually make a minor adjustment and say that that happened in July. So I made it happen in June. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy May over. I'm going to take May here and copy it over one time. And so now, and so then, so that looks good. And then I'm going to make the adjustment in July, which equals the prior period times 1.1. And the taxes equal the prior period times 1.1 in July. So now that step up happened in July, totals adjusting to 87,990 and 6126. All right, so let's go through a couple more of these. So we'll say payroll telephone. We're gonna say it's pretty much the same going across. So we'll keep that as is. Same with the internet supplies. Let's keep that the same going across. Depreciation could change depending on the depreciation method that you're using. Uh, but if it's a straight line method, for example, it'd be, it'd be similar. We might be able to get that directly from the depreciation schedules, for example, if you had some other kind of, but we'll keep that uh, the same going across. Uh, miscellaneous expense. Uh, let's keep that. Now the interest, interest expense up here, let's make a change to this one. Interest might actually go down over time if you've got financing and you don't expect to have more financing on a loan, for example, because as you pay off the loan, your interest might go down. You could pull the interest directly possibly from your amortization schedule, but let's just uh, imagine that it, we have the similar kind of process, but we think it's gonna go down over time. So let's say that we're gonna say, instead of increasing it, I'm gonna say the prior period times 0.95, meaning it's only gonna be 95% of the prior amount, which brings the balance down. And then instead of keeping that salt the same, it's gonna go down, I think I'm gonna say each period, so we lower the interest uh, across, just so we can see uh, that same kind of principle, but this time it decreased instead of increasing. All right, now the other thing we had up here was this gain on the sale of investments. Those were like stocks and bonds. We're not actually in the business of selling stocks and bonds. That was like why it's in like other income. So here, let's imagine we're not gonna sell any more stocks and bonds. I'm just gonna delete this whole thing. This isn't something that's repetitive. We think that was like a one-time thing. So I'll remove that entirely. And so now we're at uh, 125.965 on the bottom line. So I think this looks good. Now let's just clean this up a bit cleaning it up. I'm saving it. I'm going back here. So notice that net income, if I look at the bottom line here, this is my net income by month. So if I double click here, we've got our, our net income summing up. This is summing up across. Now notice that February is a bit of a uh, an, 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 something to be skeptical or an issue for us to make sure that we have the cash flow to deal with February. You'll notice that we put this 6,000 in there on like a kind of like a, a, a cash based system. Which, which made us go into the negative, right? But then, but then we're back in the positive in March. So that's something we have to make sure we got the cash flow for if we're thinking of it on a cash-based system. And then we come up to the 25, uh, 20, 125, 965 for the total on the year. Okay, we can double check this number, by the way, by summing it up also this way. I could sum up this way. And I should be able to kind of double check that that number works just from a from a table perspective. So 125, uh, so I can sum it up vertically, I can sum it up horizontally, we should be good either way. Let's put some brackets around this whole thing because I like the brackets, kind of makes things stand out a little bit more. Selecting home tab, font group, dropping it down, and we want the brackets, boom. 